Hey YouTubers, Vince Romano 26 here with part 2 of the Collective Haul. This is going to be the Goodwill, Thrift Store, and Flea Market Haul. Most of the stuff that you see here is has come from the Flea Market. Excuse my bad camera view. But because I only found a few vintage pieces at the Goodwill and at the Thrift Store, I'm going to start off with those two. For those of you who frequent the Goodwill or go to your local Goodwill, they never have antique stuff. But I would definitely check out the glassware section because sometimes you can find like kitschy 70s stuff, that kind of thing. So I did look there and I found this really, really nice um, clear Halloween mug. I think it's probably from, I would say maybe mid to late 70s or maybe even late 60s, early 70s. I don't know, but I really like the design on it and I think it is old judging by the style of the mug. As you can see, I paid 99 cents for it. Thought it was really neat. I'm gonna clean it. I might use it. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Just thought it was neat because many of you know I really like vintage Halloween and just the designs of the stuff you don't see anymore. So I just thought that was really really neat. I, I'm really happy I found it actually. Next piece that I found, I think this is vintage. This is a Tupperware mug. Paid. I think it was either a quarter or fifty cents. I can't remember because it was a bunch of buy one get one half off stuff that day. So as you can see right there, fifty cents. And if we look on the bottom, <clears throat> see if I can put that in there for you. I think this might be late, late seventies, judging by the way that the brand, the label Tupperware looks. Sorry, guys. There we go, Tupperware, and it's marked "Made in the United States," so I'm happy about that. I might use this myself. It's plastic, so all I got to do is clean it, and then it should be good as new. Alright, now we're going to get to the flea market haul. I don't really know where to start here, so I guess I will just go down the line. First, one of the things that I was really happy about finding was this really neat Mark's Toy Company Fighting Nights playset. I paid $20 for it. I think I could probably get 40 or 60 I don't know. I'm hoping to double or triple my money on it. So if you open it up here, this is what came with it. It's a whole playset. And it comes with all the knights and the stuff like that. There's the castle pieces. The inside is actually in really, really nice condition. And here's the castle and everything. This is ideal 1960s toy. Toy, or material to play with, excuse me. The only issues that it really has is the fact that there's rust on the outside of the case. But if we look down here, there it is. Louis Marks Company, Glendale, West Virginia. I think it's West Virginia, I think. So this is really, really cool, and for 20 bucks, I couldn't pass it up. Alright, this is one of my, actually, actually, one of my favorite pieces that I found. This is probably from the late 50s or early 60s. It's a bread box. Let me take this down. Sorry, these are some pretty big items here. This bread box is absolutely cool. It is rusty, and I do need to take some chrome polish to it, because it's very, very dirty and disgusting. So I thought it was really cool, and when I opened it up, I discovered that it had the... Ew, what's all this nonsense? I'll just have to clean that. It has all the... Or it has the original shelf in it, so if I decide I want to put two loaves of bread in it, I can. You'll never guess how much I paid for this thing. Five dollars. It's a kill steal, and it, it has bread on it. I don't know if it has a name on it. I guess we can look. I think there's a name on it. Maybe it's on the other side. One sec, guys. So I know I saw a name on it. Oh, I think that's it right there. Nope, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe there's no writing on it. Well, there has to be a manufacturer on it somewhere. Maybe it's on the inside. Yeah, even if there isn't any writing on it, it's still a very old piece. And for $5, I couldn't beat it. Uh, when I bought it, this guy said to me that there was a bunch of recipes and they said I'll empty it out for it. I'm like, don't worry about it, I'll just take it, I'll go through it myself. Not as many old recipes as I was anticipating for such a piece like this, but... You know, for 5 bucks, I couldn't beat it. So, um, when we get down to the other part of the bed, I will show you those cookbooks. They range from 1942 up to 1973, so... Can't wait to show that to you, so let's get this down. Alright, this piece was actually a steal. 
This is a really, really neat, old-looking painted cedar frame with this really, really nice um, scene of a barn. I really like the the picture, but it's pretty beat up. If you can see, there's some rips and scuffs there. The glass is broken, too, but not a big issue because my mom's going to use the frame and make it a chalkboard because she's been getting into the crafty kind of vibe again. So when I saw this frame, I knew she wanted something like this, so I was like, I got to buy this. You guys will never guess how much I paid. I'll give you a few seconds to uh, see if you can guess. Give up. Two dollars. Two dollars for this huge frame. It's old. It's unique. I, when he told me the price of this, I was like, I'm not even going to argue. I'm taking this for two dollars because I know my mom's going to love it. So, when he said that, I was, like, sold, and then when my mom saw it, she was ecstatic. All that needs to be done is, um, let's see, these, um, screws right here, if you can see them, and I apologize for not focusing. The screws right there, and there's a bunch of them, just need to be taken out, and everything just needs to come out, and then it should be a good as new, new frame. So, I'm excited about that. Especially for my mom, because she really, really was looking for something like this. And again, for $2, I couldn't be... I was ecstatic. Now this... This was wicked cool. It's a dual-action pin reset bowling set. I thought that was really, really cool. It was only $2. Everything is there. It's in the original box. This is actually not a reseller. This is going to be for me, because I like games like this. And I thought this would be really great just to mess around with like if we have a family night or something. Something cool to mess around. And if we open up the box here, let's see if I can get it open with one hand. Sorry guys, I know this is probably not the... Here we go. If you look at this, it's really neat, and all we gotta do is pull the pins down, and we just hit them with the ball. It's really cool. Everything's there. It just is a little beat up because it's definitely an old piece. Let's see if we can find a year on it. Nope, it just says United States and all that other stuff. Comes with two balls. I don't know if one of them actually goes with it, or maybe it does. I don't know. But this was as for two dollars, and it's metal. It's not plastic. It's awesome. I couldn't pass it up for two dollars. The pe uh, people who had this had a bunch of old stuff. But some of the stuff was a little pricey, but when I saw $2 on something like this, I was like, I gotta have this. It's so cool. Right, I'm gonna shove that aside since I have room. This is a really, really neat looking tin, and as many of you know, I do not like to buy tins because they really don't ever sell. But I, this one came in that bread box, and um, it's from the 1950s. It's a Land O'Lakes um, sweet cream butter tin. The inside is magnificent. The outside's a little dirty and everything. We just might have to take some water to it. I thought that was really, really neat. And it was, I guess you could say it was free because it came with all that stuff that was in the inside. It's really, really neat. I didn't think it was old at all until I looked it up online and found out it was from the 50s. So I was happy about that. I might give this to my mom because I don't know if there's anything I can do with it. So she could probably put recipes or whatever, sewing supplies, I don't know. Put whatever in it. And I do apologize, there was one more piece from the thrift store that I forgot to show you guys. It was this um, new old stock brand of Gibson Handmade Strings. They're brand new, if I can get the package open. You can see right here, all that orange packaging, those are all the strings. I think this was either $2 or a dollar. I don't remember. I think it was 2 Yeah, the price tag says 2 but you know, buy one, get one half off at this store. So I think I might be able to get $10, $12 for these. They were just sitting on the shelf, and I was like, they're Gibson, and Gibson's a very high-end guitar company, so I was like, okay, I gotta pick those up. This next piece that I want to show you guys is actually very cool. It's a tin lithograph, and it's um, marked... If you guys can't read that, sorry. It's marked a century of progress, and I believe this is from 1933. I don't know exactly what this is. Um, it might be a base or something. I, I really don't know. But it, again, it was the same guy that I bought the cedar frame from for $2. So this was $2 as well. 
frame's a little busted up here in the corner, but that's okay. I'll just, I'm going to sell it as is. It's definitely old if you look at the back here. So I thought that was really neat. That might sell for $12, $15. I mean, I, I don't really know. I just like to make guesstimates. So I thought that was neat. These don't really sell for much at all, but I just thought it was neat. It's a metal, I don't know if, you, if it's pronounced Tuborg or Taborg beer ashtray. It's, ma it's made of metal, and if we look on the bottom here, it's marked Made in Denmark. Sorry, guys, glare. It's marked Made in Denmark there. I hope that it will sell, because it's metal, and I don't see very many metal ashtrays out there. So, I was like, okay. Alright, this next piece right here, you guys have seen in probably two of my videos. I bought one at a flea market, and then I found one at the huge estate sale that we went to with all the holiday stuff. Of the th uh, three now that I have, this one I paid the most for. This one was $10. But the reason I um, invested $10 in it was due to the fact that at Christmas time, these things do sell. They're made by the Royal Plastic Company, and they are very, very collectible. Uh, the reason that I bought it was because it was in such great shape, and I couldn't pass it up. Uh, the one that I'm really, really looking for is the Snowman. And for those of you who um, have had these before, you guys know that when they were first produced, there was a little mini plastic tree that goes in here. If you guys can find just the tree, say, at the bottom of a box at an estate seller flea market, list it on eBay because those sell for like 40 or 50 bucks just for the tree because they're always found broken or the green piece is always found stuck in Santa's hand. Another tip for these, I want to let you guys know that sometimes the electrical component goes into Santa's hand and you guys can use, um, put a bubble light in there, just a regular old Christmas light. Those ones bring a lot of money too because the electrical component goes in here and you guys can make it into kind of like a lamp or something like that. So again, if you can pay, I would say 10 or under for these, definitely pick them up because they are worth so much money. And for $10, couldn't beat it. Alright, this is the last piece that I bought from that couple who sold me the bowling alley and the Marks stuff. This is from 1983. It's a wind-up battery-operated car. The box is extremely... Oh, no, it's not the last thing. Sorry. The box is extremely beat up, but it's brand new. It's the Datsun, and it does have a barcode on it, but not a problem because it's marked 1983. 1983 NASA Industries in New York, and it's marked Made in Hong Kong. So for a dollar, I couldn't beat that, and I think I'll just um, put that on eBay, take a chance on it. It was only a buck. Couldn't beat it. These were very, very interesting to me. There was a guy there who had a bunch of old salt and pepper shakers. And I typically do not buy salt and pepper shakers because, you know, they don't really sell online, and the subject matter is what's important. So I decided to just buy these because I thought they were very interesting. Originally, he had a dollar a piece for this uh, pair of salt and pepper shakers, but I bought something else, and he just said, um, you can have them for a dollar, so I was excited, and, and you know, I'm not usually one to show things that are not vintage, but I'll just show you guys what I found. If we look over here, if we look in the center of my extremely cluttered closet, we see this little, um, skeleton here. He was in a pile of, um, new, um, Halloween pieces, and he was only 50 cents, so two for a dollar. I couldn't beat that. All right, and so 50 cents for these and 50 cents for that awesome skeleton that I found. Couldn't beat that. And I really like the fact that the paint's a little wear, or it's a little faded on it, because that just shows you the age. I don't think any of them are marked Japan or anything, but that's okay, because I really, really like these. Next pieces that I want to show you actually came from the same guy who sold me the bread box. These are um, doll pieces. Um, this is marked Taiwan, so I assume this is probably from the 70s. There's no barcode on it or anything, but it has a head. It has a bottle and some hands in it. Might put that online. Charge three or four dollars for it. It was two dollars for four pieces, so I couldn't beat that at all. So that was... I don't even know. I'm not good at math. You guys know that. So I thought that was really, really great. And then this one is kind of weird. I think it's a dime store grandmother doll. Kind of odd to find out that she's naked. And if we look on her back here, if I can get that in there. It's marked Made in Hong Kong, so that definitely indicates to me it's a dime store toy. Uh, I might put her online for $3. Don't know exactly, but, you know, for the price I paid for her, I just couldn't beat it. And the guy was insisting that I buy it because he was like, oh, come on, you can just get it. I'm like, fine, I'll just take it. <laughs> All right, this piece is something that 
I typically don't buy because they do not sell online, even if they are vintage. But this has my one of my favorite Hollywood blondes of all, Jane Mansfield. It's the 19, June 1963 nudist Jane Mansfield Playboy issue. The guy um, that I bought this from had a whole stack of Playboys that dated from, I think, early 60s up to 1970. He said, why don't you take the whole box for $10? And I was like, uh, if I did that, my mom might kill me and she might kill me to know that I have this issue of Playboy. But you know what? She can't keep me a baby forever. So I paid a buck for this issue, and I'd scroll through it, but I'm afraid that if I do that, um, YouTube might censor it, or they might um, say I need to put an age restriction on it, so I don't think I'll flip through it and show you, but if you guys have this issue, you guys know the pictures are pretty good, and you know, Jane Mansfield's curves were, oh, oh of the decade, so be sure to look out for these. Don't ever buy it on eBay. I mean, they sell on eBay for like $12, $13, but don't ever buy them online if you're interested. Definitely look at flea markets, especially like the ones that I go to, because they have the good junk, so... If you see bat boxes of Playboy that look old and you want to see if you could find this issue, look through because you know what? I looked for it for a while. I went, I was like, oh, there's no way I'll find it. And then as soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm buying it. All right, from the bread box, this um, is the stack of old um, recipe books and things like that. So I'll show you what we found here. I'm not going to go through the recipes, but I just thought maybe you guys like to see what I found. This little, oops, sorry. This little sweet and low, sorry, I just want to focus real quick. This little um, cooking with sweet and low granulated sugar substitute book is from 1965. thought that was really, really interesting. I just think it's funny to think that sweet and low has been around for that long. I mean, they had to start somewhere, right? This one right here is Meal Plans with Exchange List. It's from 1950, I think it is. Let me, let me open the book and we'll see. Yeah, it says copyright 1950. So I thought that was interesting. This one is my favorite of all of them. The 40, my 40 favorite recipes. I think this one's from the 50s as well, but I can make a guess in it because look at the outfits these women are wearing and look at the style of the kitchen. Very 50s, I think. So that one was cool. I'm definitely going to put that in my antique scrapbook that you guys have seen with my DIY project. I don't know how old this is. I might consider throwing this out because it just doesn't have a year on it. I don't know how old it is. This one, this recipe book, I think... Oh, it's from 1975. I meant to just chuck that. In the garbage it goes. This was the oldest one. This one, I think, is from 1942. I don't know if it's complete or not. This I might end up chucking, too, because it's pretty beat up. You know, I think I'm going to toss it because it's pretty beat. An elevated cholesterol book from 1975. As many of you know, as the decades went on, obesity rates um, began, to sky began to get worse. And we're at a point now where it's really, really bad. Don't know if this has a year in it or not. Let's go to the back here. Or maybe it's on the back here. Yeah, it's definitely an old book. This one's from 1977. It says, Say Cheese. Just has neat stuff in it. I might chuck this one, too, because it's not that old. This one is not that old, but I thought my mom would like it because it has Hershey's favorite recipes, and we all love Hershey's. This one's from the 70s, too. And it just has a bunch of good recipes in it to lower the cholesterol and lower your sodium intake. Campbell's cookbook for most of the money main dishes. I think this is from the 70s. Yep, 1975, right here. So I thought that would do well. I might just bring this one to the flea market with me and sell it for like a buck. This is just a slip. I like the color of the girl right here. I might actually just cut that and just put that in the book. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to cut the um, art out and put it in my book because I really like the colors of these girls. This is another one of those beat up books that I think I'm just going to end up throwing away because it's not complete. I think this is from, I don't even know how old it is, if it's from the 70s. It's made by Spam. Do any of you guys like Spam? Because I've tried it before and I don't like it at all. I think it's absolutely gross. I don't see any year on it, so, you know, I'm getting rid of it. And this was the 
one that was from 1973. You guys ever heard of Crisco? I'm sure you have. Let's see if I could find the year on it. I know it's in here somewhere. Yep, here it is. 1973. So that was it for all the recipe books. I ended up throwing some away because they weren't as old as I thought they were, so. Alright, next piece that I bought, um, that was from that same couple who sold me all the, uh, Mark stuff and the bowling thing, is this Superman monogram. It's sealed, but the box is in awful shape, as you can see. It's crushed, it's all over the place, it's beats a crap. But it's brand new, never been open. Paid five dollars. I could probably get maybe fifteen. And I don't think it has a year on it. Let's see. It's marked age twelve through adult or ten through adult. Modeled in blue. I mean, I don't see any years on it anywhere. No matter how hard I look, high and low. But it was five dollars. I couldn't beat it. So I was happy about that. That might be, that might sell. Alright, this last piece, I'm not sure exactly why I bought it. The guy just said it was a dollar, and I was kind of like, you know, it looks 60s or 70s. It looks like a carnival toy prize. I'm still kind of wondering why I did buy it. I mean, it's kind of girly looking, but, you know, maybe I'll just bring it back and sell it for two. It's kind of neat looking. I like the colors of it, like the, the neon green for the body and that kind of thing, but it's kind of girly, I think. So I might end up bringing that back to the flea market, selling it for $2. So yeah, that's everything that I got for the flea market. And remember to stay tuned for part three. I've got an antique store haul for you guys. So yeah, thank you for watching. Please remember to stay tuned for part three.